Then you went to Ottawa to the Ottawa Repertory Theatre? Uh, yes, right after that early stint with Rosanna and her theatre on the hill, um, she'd hired a, a, a director from England called Malcolm Morley, who was you know, very, very good, very professional, and he could get everything on very quickly and skillfully. And he organized uh, with a man called Hugh Parker, the Stage Society in Ottawa. <laughs> we played in the old La Salle Academy on Geek Street, um, which is down from, uh, you go down uh, Sussex and turn right and there's Geek, terrible place run by, Catholic organization run by priests. And they let us have the theater, which we, we did bi-weekly rep. It was a real theater or a gymnasium It, it was sort of theater. like a high school stage, you know, but it was, uh, I, God, it was so long ago I can barely remember. It was freezing. Awful, awful cold, but we didn't care. We were all young, and and we were a good bunch. Um, Malcolm was a good, good captain of the ship, and we did, uh, you know, play every two weeks, which had to be <coughs> read by the priests, who would then censor them if <laughs> if they thought there was anything too risque. And I noticed they took an inordinately long time reading the risque plays. They would read them over and over again, <laughs> just to make sure. But they were pretty fair, so we, we did a few good things. But of course, one never knew one's lines. That was a terrible thing, because you would be doing bits of see how they run in the Winslow Boy, you know. You, you, you just overlap. If you forgot, oh, well, what was that line in that play we did three weeks ago? I better, sh I better shove that in. That'll sound good. You learn to ad lib. At least it was an, a school of ad libbing <laughs> to get yourself out of trouble. But uh, it was a wonderful gang, and it became very instantly the following year the Canadian Repertory Theatre, which it was called, and it was really the first English theatre in, in Canada that, for a long time, that was professional. We all w were paid for it. And it was the only one at that time. The French had theirs, but that was the only one. Do you remember yeah. how much you were paid? Yeah, I think I was paid something like $25 a week, which I thought was terrific. Then it went up to maybe 40 when I was became a leading man, along with a very good actor here called Derek Ralston, who had an enormous talent. As a, as a light comedian, he was superb, and he sadly died very young. Uh, Derek had a huge future ahead of him, and I, we shared the leading roles together. The two male leads were me and Derek. And he, he, he always excelled as a sort of Cary Grant of Canada. You know, he was a superb light comedian. A different show every two weeks, yeah. which meant you rehearsed in the day and you played at night. Yeah. Yeah, but there's the only way to get through Ottawa, which is a pretty dull town. And, <laughs> and we went to Hull most of the time because Ottawa closed at 9.30. And I was there only recently, and it still closes at 9.30. <laughs> Nothing's changed. <laughs> Cold? Cold. Audience in fur coats? That's why we drank, of course, just to keep warm. <laughs> uh, audience in fur coats. But my God, they were a very loyal little audience. And they put up with us, you see, with all our best lines. And they actually joined in. And it was wonderful. They, they came to sort of laugh at us, really, and then they, then finally they had a great affection for us and we for them. They were so loyal. How they ever put up with us, I don't know. But there were some very talented people in that company. Amelia Hall had, took, had taken over as the artistic director of the Canadian Repertory Theatre from, from Malcolm Morley when he left. Mm -hmm. And uh, she did some wonderful productions up there with a young colleague, us again, Leo Cicery, Richard Easton, Silvio Narizzano, all names that came out of Montreal, really.